บูเกอรีเป็นแบรนด์จิวเวลรี่ที่ประสบความสำเร็จในธุรกิจนาฬิกาจากคนจนทุกคนในวงการต้องจับตามองในเวลานี้ด้วยนาฬิกาออกตัวฟินิชิโมที่ทำลายสถิติโลกครั้งแล้วครั้งเล่านาฬิกาสไตล์ซีเครตวอชต่างๆที่ต้องอาศัยความแยบยนในการออกแบบและบูเกอรียังขยันทำการตลาดให้ทุกคนได้รู้จักถึงบุค,คลิกและความสำเร็จของตนได้เป็นอย่างดีอีกด้วยเราจะไปคุยทุกเรื่องนี้กันกับคุณเจฟฟรีย์ฮังกรรมการผู้จัดการประจำภูมิภาคเอเชียใต้และแปซิฟิกของบุคลีครับสวัสดีครับผม Good morning Good morning ครับ Well it's uh, good to have you back in Bangkok Yes It's been some yeah. time No actually I'm not <laughs> I find myself here every month Even the importance of the business and the clients here I'm All here right very often. Can you so. tell us more about yesterday evening because I saw only some parts of it You saw the, the important parts Okay yeah, All right There was a lot so. lot more going on behind the scenes but uh-huh. All I can say is we were very, very pleased that nature cooperated, okay. and we were able to pull it off with the event that you saw in that magnificent courtyard. Mm-hmm. And then we had the fireworks, and our clients were blown away. So that's perfect timing. Let me uh, congratulate you on your double Grand Prix wins. <laughs> thank you, thank you. We just come off of that, so of course, very, very proud. Bulgari is no stranger to those awards. Mm-hmm. This year. Of course, maybe a bit of a disappointment to uh, to not win the top prize. Okay. But as our CEO told us, he said it was time to allow someone else <laughs> to get that honor. But of course, you know, still uh-huh. our Octo that was submitted this year did win the Audacity Prize, which yes, also it is uh, very prestigious. It was, uh, if I remember correctly, it was entered into the. Uh, Mechanical exception prize so, uh, category, yes. but yes. in in the end, it won the uh, uh, special prize. Correct, correct. Did you uh, foresee the uh, Octo Finissimo Ultra winning one of the prizes from the beginning? Uh, you know, again, be- because of this track record that we've had, I think uh-huh. we all it was it was a given that yes, <laughs> it would be recognized somehow. Okay, and I yes. think this is where Bulgari really has made a name for itself mm-hmm. in terms of these innovations, particularly to Octo. Mm-hmm. Then that's why collectors are really paying more and more attention to bullring. Yes. Not so much because of the complications and so forth, but because in terms of doing something very unique mm-hmm. related to thinness, or of course this year with the NFT, mm-hmm. you can count on bullring for that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The other prize that you won mm-hmm. was the Jewelry Watch mm-hmm. Prize uh, with the uh, Serpenti Museum scene. Yeah. When I looked at the uh, the other nominated pieces. They were quite splendid in their mm-hmm. own way as mm-hmm. well. So, what do you think uh, contributed to uh, the win for your Serpenti? I can't go into the minds of the jurors, but in terms of what makes it important for us is mm-hmm. that Serpenti being such an important icon, mm-hmm. you know, which really is a jewel piece. It's the first time that we've done something with a complication that was really complex because mm-hmm. of the size. Mm-hmm. So, the fact that we were able to do that, I think, really resonated to everybody. This is the one with the BVL uh, 100. Yeah, yes, uh-huh. yes, exactly, uh-huh. yeah, uh-huh. exactly. Uh-huh. So the fact that we took something that you almost take for granted within okay. Bulgari to really stretch our imagination, our limits to create this sort of watch, I uh-huh. think people really took notice. When when speaking of Bulgari, the Serpenti is uh, one of the first things that comes to mind for a lot uh, of people. One of, if not the first thing, especially, the first thing? especially okay. in this market. Okay, uh, all right. <laughs> so, we are in Bangkok, what, what, what yes. do you think of this phenomenon? Because it is a good thing, of course, but can it be like too good a thing? Uh, let's hope not. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right, right. Let's hope not. But you okay. know, I, Serpenti is something. And each time I, I personally look at it, mm-hmm. I fall in love with it all over again. Mm-hmm. And I think here in Thailand and in Southeast Asia, there's mm-hmm. also a Water snake god, uh, uh, n- 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 Naka. Naka, exactly, Naka. N- Naka. exactly. So uh-huh. I think obviously yeah. that resonates in a certain way. Okay. But you know, ser- serpenti is is synonymous with mm-hmm. Wolverine. A lot of that is the Taylor, Cleopatra. Mm-hmm. But today, it's the most iconic thing that we have, mm-hmm. and because a lot of the purchases are done as investments, clients know that mm-hmm. if your your first important Bulgari piece mm-hmm. needs to be serpenti. Right. right. Whatever else you have in your collection, there has to be a s e r p e n t i n piece. Yes. There is actually a, a question from one of our uh, readers. Uh-huh. She wants to know about Lisa. Lisa, <laughs> of course, <laughs> of course. So Lisa okay, effect. so, so yes. she's been uh, the ambassador for you for about two years now. Uh, just over, yes, exactly. Yeah, just yeah. over the years. Yeah. How can we measure the success of? Her being there for you. I mean, oh, is there a way to tell that for Lisa? And it's it's not just for the Thai market, but uh, globally. Uh-huh. Not just Thai, not just no. South Korea. You know, we 
we had invited her to Paris mm -hmm. for the international event that we had. Mm -hmm. And I was astounded that everywhere she went, the throngs of people waiting for her. The fans. It, the fans. Uh -huh. It wasn't just Asian faces. I mean, uh -huh. it's all over the world. There were Americans, there were Europeans, there were uh -huh. Africans, everybody. My God. I mean, Lisa has this, she really is a global phenomenon. Uh -huh. uh, and we are very fortunate to have her as one of our ambassadors. Uh -huh. But, you know, they, they've asked me, uh, anything Lisa puts on, do you, you're able to sell it. Message. My God. Yes, but but, but she, she represents only uh, the jewelry parts. So, we're, no. so, but so far, yeah? but we've just done a collaboration where she's helped us design a particular watch. Okay. Uh, it's been announced. It's right. not been, uh, I don't think it's in, uh, in the stores yet, but it's been announced in terms of this collaboration, collaboration. Got, okay I miss it but sorry there, yeah there'll be more to it's I mean it's it's a um, it's an everyday uh, we can call it jeweled watch but not not a very high price point okay. okay for a crisis as major as COVID it caused only a very short shock to the market yes so what do you think is the uh, the likely challenge that you are going to face in the coming years or your challenge will be something like producing well, just enough, but not too much, or? So, you know, with COVID, the, as you put it, there was this huge shock to the system, but interestingly, it only lasted about six months mm -hmm. before local markets began to open up. People couldn't mm -hmm. travel, mm -hmm. but they could shop and pretty much do things mm -hmm. within their own home countries. Spend. <laughs> and we, we saw that, as you've heard the term before, but this revenge spending, okay. which perpetuated, especially in this part of the world. Uh -huh. Looking forward today, I mean, at the end of 2022, looking to 2023, mm -hmm. the outlook, ironically, is a bit more bleak than even the pandemic. Because, because of the uh, ongoing... Starting with the on Ukrainian war mm -hmm. and so forth, but, you know, as everyone is foreseeing, the world may go into a global recession, and I think this may have a much bigger impact overall. Okay. Now, having said that, uh, the luxury industry mm -hmm. has always proven to be more resilient okay. to these sorts of fluctuations versus others. Okay. We'll, we'll see. So far, we have no indication that we're slowing down. But, you know, in luxury, sometimes having uh, a bit more demand than supply is not necessarily a bad thing. Well... When you say that, I can think of one example, like oh, right away. There, there are many watches. Yeah, 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 yeah. That category. You know, the yes. uh, the tenth anniversary uh, pieces ah, that you oh have gosh, for the yes. uh, Octo <laughs> Finissimo. It's yeah. like I get all the calls from yes, all the friends. Yes, like, yes, can you yes. get one from me? Say, like, I cannot even get one for myself. Yes. So I cannot yes. get one for you. Yes. There were only two hundred pieces uh, for Correct. for and each all, of the. All basically all spoken for mm -hmm. within 48 hours of the announcement, not even production what? of the announcement. Uh -huh. all, I mean, that, that was 200. Uh -huh. If it were 1,000, we could have sold it, maybe even 2,000, but I mean, uh -huh. of course, uh -huh. it was a just strategic decision to limit that number. Okay. But uh, the, uh, the uh, demand was overwhelming. overwhelming. For the whole world and the also, world. of course, yes. for the, uh, yes. our markets. Yes. Oh my God, that's uh, quite a lot. Yeah. So uh, that speaks also to the uh, global success of the uh, Octo Collection. Absolutely. The success is the uh, beyond question, of course, but is there a way you can tell if your Octo customers are those who are new to the brand, to, new to the brand or if they have bought other Bukri products in the past? It's, it's a very wide spectrum. We, okay, first and foremost, we have a lot of... Uh, uh, husbands or boyfriends that have uh, found their way into Bulgari because okay. of their significant other's appreciation of our jewels. Okay. Then, as you, you're well aware, we actually retail our watches through watch-specific uh -huh. retailers as well. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. All right? uh -huh. Uh -huh. And that market is very different because these are really watch connoisseurs and collectors. Mm -hmm. And you've got that segment too, which is extremely equally strong, mm -hmm. I would say, as our mm -hmm. own clientele. Mm -hmm. But you ra we rarely find uh, a gentleman walking into one of our Bulgari boutiques seeking the Octo. Mm -hmm. okay? They're usually they're connected because of a woman. Yes. But uh -huh. that's where our strategy to also partner with the watch retailers, that's how we capture the other market. And I would say I on Octo, it's 50-50. What would be the hidden gem, or what would be the, uh, the hidden gems of Bulgari that uh, people 
have yet to discover. Have you? <laughs> <laughs> or that you want to maybe pitch a little bit more, yeah. On watches and innovation, this is, uh, I mean, even internally, mm -hmm. it's all kept very, very hush-hush, okay? But I, I know that next year, there'll be uh, a few launches that are related to collaborations mm -hmm. that will be met with a lot of enthusiasm, okay? okay. A lot. Uh, right. You know of our association with Jared Genta. Mm -hmm. Okay, we did something previously with MBNF that yes. was quite audacious and went yeah, very well team. here. Mm -hmm. uh, there are others to come related to that and even more. So I okay. think in that sense, Bulgari will continue to really surprise and add more shocks to the system. Right. Um, if I may speak a bit about the gems, because obviously we're here because of the Eden collection that we're sharing with. Yes the region. Mm -hmm. This is, uh, as you walk through our showroom and you look at the display, which is floral, okay, mm -hmm. we've got plants, flowers, and so forth. The pieces, the masterpieces that we're displaying blend in perfectly because they are manifestations of nature that Bulgari is perfectly crafted for individuals to be able to wear and enjoy. And I think that's always been a strength of Bulgari's and mm -hmm. I'm very glad that for the first time they actually dedicate a collection to that specifically in mm -hmm. nature. And of course, within that, we have jeweled watches as well, mm -hmm. which perfectly represent that. Mm -hmm. Well, I actually enjoyed the, uh, the tour just earlier yeah. this morning. The pieces are magnificent, yes. Fantastic. Yes. And then uh, for some of them, I have only seen the pictures before. And when oh, I when see in, in real exactly. and uh, the sizes of some of them, it actually surprised <laughs> me. It was like... <laughs> Beautiful, yes, huh? the size. So, I mean, with this, uh, this time, we actually have the second largest cut spindle uh, ah, in yes. the world. Uh -huh. So that's an extraordinary piece. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for your time. And uh, hopefully we'll meet again either in Geneva or in Singapore. Yes, okay, very soon. I hope so, too. Okay, Kyle. Okay. Thank you so much, Kyle. Thank you. Okay, bye-bye, Thank, Thank you.